Hey friends, welcome to the channel. On this channel, I strive to bring you the best information I can about all things homesteading. Well, if I don't have the knowledge myself, I bring on experts. This is gonna be a new series that I'm gonna start in bringing on friends that are experts in certain areas. This is my friend Josh Shelton, and he's an expert in knives and knife sharpening. So Josh, can you tell us how you got into knives and specifically knife steel? Yes, um, when I was oh, 12, 13 years old, I used to get the Smoky Mountain Knife Catalog. Oh yeah. And back then there was a handful of steels that people used for knives pretty much across the board. Um, but I was obsessed with it. And it became an obsession that just lasted and lasted. And I remember when I was in college, I bought my first really good knife. And at the time, a very expensive knife, mm. which, um, you know, a college student spending $140 on a knife was kind of crazy back then. That is crazy. But it was my first introduction to what a really quality knife could be. Then as we progress in the knife world, things have just gotten better and better. And now there's steels being developed specifically for knives by themselves. A lot of knife steels come from industry, you know, food preparation or processing, what then made their way into knives. Uh, but now they're actually developing steel specifically for knives, which has led to kind of a revolution in really good cutlery steel. So Josh has a very successful Instagram account, PM2OG. If you want to know anything about knives, it's over there. One thing I do on my Instagram a lot is I do kind of crazy stuff with new steels <laughs> to show you gotta check it out. to show how they're not weak. Yeah. <laughs> in short. So I mean I'll chop big cable with them, brick, I'll do, you know, I'll do these crazy things. And I also do edge retention testing so that we see how many ropes, say for instance, rope cuts you can make before the knife goes dull. And some of these higher end steels, I mean, I'll get a thousand plus cuts on natural rope before it won't slice paper nice ah, and smooth. Yeah, yeah. In, am I correct? Companies send you knives to do this type of testing on? Yeah, I do some testing for Benchmade. They've been fun oh, to work with. Nice. Yeah, so I yeah, so they're they're a great company. I love that they're American made and American sourced and all of that. Uh, fantastic, yeah, fantastic company. Very cool. And what, since you brought up Benchmade, one, and the reason I recommended a Benchmade to him is um, this lock is called an Axis lock. It's been so amazing. Yeah, so what I love about the Axis lock is when you're closing the knife, your fingers don't get in the way. So you can pull it back, and you see the blade comes open, and with a little bit of a wrist flick, you can open the blade without even touching the blade. I mean, you can open the blade without even touching it. So then to close it, it's the same thing. You pull back on that and you can close the knife. So it's a fast in, out of the pocket, fast back in the pocket, yeah. and your fingers are never in the way. Yeah, and if you're it's, doing work out on the homestead and you need one hand free to hold something, and you pull this out of your pocket with this type of action, then it is much easier to get that back into your pocket and continue to work if you need one hand. That is, it's been yeah. very, very nice. Something like this Kershaw, um, is this a liner lock? It's, it's called a frame lock. Frame lock. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it's open, you kind of got to futz with it and your, fit, your thumb's in the way to push the lock over and then you kind of got to close it like that. So today I really wanted to highlight why a knife is pretty much one of the most important tools Absolutely. that you can have on your homestead or as a homesteader or somebody who's off-grid self-sufficient and how to basic proper care of the knife but why is this $110 bench made so much better of an investment than this $30 Kershaw which I use for maybe two three years but then what happened it broke it broke and it's a softer steel so i've learned too from josh it wears out really fast right so there's a couple things that make a knife valuable um, okay. beyond just having one in your pocket and using it 
So I'll use, for instance, your your two as an example. So when when you texted me and said, "Hey, my knife broke. I want uh, I wanted something better." So this this knife is uh, pretty standard Benchmade Griptilian. It's one that I recommend all the time to people because for the cost you get a lot. It's USA made. It's quality materials, but the blade steel is S30V. Doesn't mean a lot to most people, but it's kind of one of the Nowadays, it used to be the highest, one of the highest tier steels you could get in a production knife, and now that's kind of changing as we get more and more steels. But it's still incredible quality for the value. Um, the the Kershaw, for instance, um, a Chinese made, um, you know, they're they're good knives for people who don't use them very much. Um, but it broke for you know pretty good reasons. But the knife steel is of a lesser quality it's not going to stay as sharp as long and it's going to tend to chip and roll on the edge which means you just lose your you just lose your edge much faster so hunters are somebody who understand this really well yeah. because when you're skinning out a large animal so i spent a lot of time in northern idaho and a lot of the guys up there would skin out a moose they got a lot of gristle, a lot of dirt, a lot of yeah, gunk, yeah. and so they would go through all these knives. Well, if you have a knife with a super high edge retention, you're not going to get dull very fast. So you're going to be able to do more jobs for longer, and that's what a better steel gets you. This knife right here is very special to me. This was my father's. It's a buck 112, and I think this uh, buck knife from the early 80s, or maybe even late 70s, was a really high quality knife at the time. At the time it was, absolutely. But now, right. the steel's changed so much. Significantly. Significantly. When you have hardness in steel and you have toughness in steel. Mm. And the thing, something that is harder tends to hold an edge a little bit longer, but as you move towards hardness, you lose toughness because they come, become more brittle. Right. So the more brittle, the more they'll chip and different things, but they do have longer edge retention. So the knife community has always been trying to balance out those two and have a high toughness with a certain amount of high hardness and then the kind of chemistry in the steel that gives you long edge retention. Because right. a lot of it matters what go into the steel and what actual elements are there making up the steel. Right. And that's another thing. So there's a lot of science to it. There's a lot of complication in it. But the finished product is now you have a really quality knife that you can get fairly inexpensively. And as much as somebody carries it, I mean, the investment is you can have a 30 or $40 knife that lasts you, you know, maybe a year or two or three, but you're not gonna get the work done with it on average that you get with something that's a higher quality steel and just a better product overall. And that's something I just found out. So for so many years, buying the 20 and $30 knives from the large sporting goods stores, uh, that was good for me at that point, but I quickly realized when coming out to our homestead that this tool was not the proper tool for the work that I do out here. Yeah, homesteading is a totally different ball game. So now that we've talked about Josh's expertise and the tools and why the tool is so important, you need to have the skill to take care of the tool. And the skill is almost just as and important as the tool itself. So we're going to talk about uh, basic sharpening and why what I chose to sharpen it with was so terrible <laughs> and because I was a little lazy too. Um, because I do have a decent sharpening kit and Josh also lent me a good sharpening kit but it was because of my laziness and I don't want you to fall into that same thing. So I think a lot of you understand that but I'll just lay myself out there for you. So I bought this little uh, Smith pull-through sharpener right here. Put the blade in there and you just draw it through. It's good for very fast sharpening if you lose an edge, but why is this thing so terrible? So, um, <laughs> yeah, and I mean they have, just like anything, they kind of have their place. Um, sure. So with a softer steel, that has carbides. Carbide is the element of the steel that does the actual cutting. So it's kind of in a softer matrix of other elements. Um, the carbides are what you want to sharpen because those are what's going to give you your long edge retention. Mm. 
taking care of a knife is really just in, as important as having a knife. Um, because if the knife isn't working, if it's not sharp, it's actually more dangerous and you're not going to get the use out of it that you yeah. want. They always say a dull knife is more dangerous than a sharp knife. Yes. Um, which I understand. I mean, I, I get it, but you're just not going to get work done. That's, that's, right. that's the main thing. So one of these sharpeners, uh, one, it's not using diamonds and really a lot of the modern steels require diamonds in order to sharpen, uh, those those makeups. Because um, they're so hard. Yes, yeah, they run at a much higher hardness. For a really thin blade kitchen knife that is a softer steel, um, these do, I mean, they can work some, but they, they're never gonna get you near the edge of having a proper diamond-based sharpening system. Okay. So, um, and I, we, we took your knife here that you had done this with a little bit and we had sharpened it with my diamond system and, and the difference is pretty amazing when you, look at, when you look at the two together. Yeah. So what I, what I like to use, and there's a lot of these on the market, a lot of different companies, but it's a guided diamond system. So this happens to be a KME brand. Um, it's the one I like to use. Um, I technically use it a little bit differently than most people but you have a guided system you set your you set your angle there so that gives you an angle that you want your blade to be sharpened at and then you put this diamond you put these diamond based stones in here you lock your blade in here you draw this along the blade sharpening it now this is going to cut into the blade it's going to actually do a really good job sharpening the blade so let me ask you how important the investment is in your sharpening tools is it as much as the investment in your knife yeah so the the importance of it is absolutely as important as the knife but you can get a really quality knife for around a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars no problem you can get all the quality really that you need out of a knife at a hundred to hundred fifty dollars the sharpening kits are a little more expensive there's different companies but they tend to run around two hundred dollars for a good kit few hundred dollars investment kind of gets you everything you need. This kit is also special to me. This kit is, it looks similar to what Josh has here. And it was my father's, and this is also from the late 70s, I believe. And um, it's got three, these are probably what you said, Arkansas stone? Probably some kind of stone. Yeah, yeah. more natural stone, and, bonded stone. And this kit was fine for sharpening the older, softer steels, but it's not going to work well for something like this. It's not going to get into those carbides like you need to because they're so hard. Mm -hmm. So you need that diamond to shave those. Gotcha. Okay. So this is what I try to talk about a lot on the channel is where should you invest your money? And tools are an important place to invest money. If that tool is used a lot and it needs to be of good quality. So I have Harbor Freight tools and I have DeWalt tools. I purchased so many of these cheaper knives when I could have just purchased one knife a long time ago that was of higher quality and still had the same knife. So beyond building that skill of sharpening, which is extremely important when owning a good tool like this, there is other maintenance. Very little, okay. but very easy. Okay, great. So with a folding knife, there's basically, um, there's, there's screws that can come loose. There's a pivot that needs lubed occasionally, and um, I do those. I, I have three simple items that I keep close by for doing basic knife maintenance. One is a great product. It's a uh, knife pivot lube. That just that's it's a great non-toxic um, oil that you can put on the pivot in order to keep it moving and and smooth. Uh, the other is just a simple little torque set. So this one mm. has the torque bits because most modern quality folders, they use a torque bit system. Okay. And so this gives you all the bits you need. It's very inexpensive. Wire bits are the ones that we always recommend in the knife community because they're made out of a hardened steel that won't break because those little teeny bits have a tendency to do that. And we're going to list all these things in the description below the video as well. Yeah. The other one is just a little bit of blue, uh, blue Loctite. So you don't want red Loctite. That's a permanent. You won't ever be able to get anything apart at that point. Um, so the blue Loctite is you can, it'll hold the screws in place. 
but then you can still undo them if you want to or need to. So those three items are really that with some sharpening. I mean, you can have a knife forever and never need to send it in, never need to get it fixed. You can just maintain it yourself. And for those of you really trying to attain that self-sufficiency, if you have a good uh, stock of these products and you have a good sharpener and a good knife, you're gonna be solid for a long period of time. Whether it's a homesteading skill, a prepper skill, or survivalist skill, this is just kind of one of the, I think, one of the most important base skills that you can have. Mm -hmm. So friends, I hope this type of video was informative for you. And if it is, let me know in the comments section below. I wanna bring more content like this to you. And if you have any questions about knives or knife sharpening, head over to Josh's Instagram and he is very happy to answer any questions uh, via DM or whatever it is on any of his posts. I love helping people get into the hobby. Awesome. Now I want you to go check out this video right here, which shows you how we made this paracord overstrike collar for our cold steel axe. Have a great day and we will see you on the next video. Bye.